for joining us on the news this hour. Your agency has arrested 127 people. I mean, do you even have the space to keep all of them at once? But this AFCC statement we're looking at here is coming after an outcry online and what seem a protest in Akure. Help us understand what informed these arrests. What intel did you get to necessitate the operation? Yeah, thank you very much for having me on the program. Well, the truth of the matter is that the commission did very, very diligent uh, surveillance for more than six weeks. It was not a one-off thing. It was uh, the fruit of our uh, recognizers, our surveillance, intelligence over time, lasting about six weeks. Uh, if you get to know that scene of crime, our operatives had visited that scene of crime several times to be sure of the facts, of the authenticity of our facts. So uh, it was not just a sweeping operation and the FCC people came and just came and arrested everybody whimsically, without any intelligence, without any fact, without any basis. No, it was as a result of very diligent uh, 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 investigation, intelligence, and uh, even on the spot assessment of what was on ground in that place. You know, that very Saturday, a Yahoo party was, was holding in that place. I can tell you very author authoritatively. And uh, all the people that were arrested, our profiling showed that, yes, our intelligence, our, our surveillance you know, were authentic. Because many of them have owned up to the crime. We have very, very cogent, very, very authentic facts you know, to, 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 to substantiate that. So it was not just an operation for operation's sake. It was an operation that was derived from very diligent, you know, surveillance, very, very professional, you know, understanding of what, what was happening at that scene of the crime. I hear you, Mr. Oyewale. You know, as we speak, it is your word against that of the suspects and, and some of the eyewitnesses we've also spoken with who claim that this is a party between a groom and his friends, a, you know, a, a battleless party, so to speak. Uh, but in November last year, recall that the AFCC chairman did direct that sting operations of this kind um, at night time should be stopped at all the commands of the AFCC. Is this not in defiance to that directive, considering the time? What the, what the executive chairman, Mr. Ola Olukoyedi, what he said very clearly, he said that the commission will no longer be undertaking raid. I want us to understand that. And of course, he said that our sting operation, of course, as a law enforcement agency, mm -hmm. is a global practice. There is no law enforcement agency that will tell you that I will not do sting operation. But he said that raiding people's home, raiding business premises, whimsically, without any basis, maybe in the night, he discouraged it. And they did not even go in the night, they went in the early hours of the day. But that was exactly what happened in Akure. So they were there in the early hours of the day. What time is there? What time are you referring to, Mr. Oyewale? What time did the operation No, happen? I said early hours of the day. That was when they went to that uh, Yahoo party. You know, it was a party scene. And uh, our intelligence showed that all of the people, the 127 suspects that were arrested, they were in that party. It was, I told you that we, are, we did our investigation before we went there. Early hours can be, can be 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., which is still considered night. But I don't want us to drag that further. EFCC is now claiming it didn't harass anyone as against online reports of beating and even collection yeah, of some you, wigs. Most of the videos, most of the video that you see circulating online, mm. they, 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 they are fake videos. They are not authentic. Exactly, not exactly the point I was going to make, Mr. Because, because, you see, our just our a minute, that just a there, minute, sir. Your statement says, because I have read your statement on this, so I, I want us to move ahead of that. Your statement says you will conduct forensic analysis on a video to confirm its falsehood. Now, that sense of premeditation, even before a forensic examination is done, makes people quite uncomfortable. And it brings the neutrality now, of the agency to doubt as an interested party in this case. How do you react to okay, that? Yeah, you see, 
We we said we do forensic analysis of the video to confirm that it's fake. The fact, to, to establish the fact that that video did not originate from that scene of the crime. It did not originate from that scene of the crime. We are very sure. And to make a general double sure, we said we are going to do forensic analysis to establish the, the first code contained in that video. And whatever the analysis of the video, whatever it comes out with, will be made public. But that, so sure that you have already is, determined the outcome of that examination. That's the point I'm making because you are not considering the possibility of some people sustaining some degree of injury during the arrest. Were you then person see, during this raid, Mr. Oyewale? Now, you see, what really happened, when you conduct an operation, when you, any law enforcement agency, when you want to make an arrest, you may, you may apply minimal force. You know, but uh, as far as that scene of crime was concerned, there was no injury, nobody was brutalized, nobody was wounded. They were only, they were only asked to submit their phones most of these people, most of the guests that they are talking about, they are in the, our in the office right now as we are talking to what reclaim their phones. Why? And they were interviewed. They were in, we had them on video. We had them on tape to really tell us what happened. And they said that nobody was brutalized. We did not demonize anybody. Mm. They came and returned their phone to them. Another issue of concern here is why did your officials remove the CCTV cameras in this facility? Our operative did not remove the CCTV camera. If you look at that statement, the manager of one of the clubs who happened to be a suspect, he was the one that mandated the ICT staff at that club to remove the CCTV. And when he removed it, he handed it over to our operatives. He was also arrested. And together with the CCTV, together with the suspect, they came to our Ibadan office. If the CCTV was damaged, how would he have removed it? So are you, saying, are, you saying, are you saying the EFCC is in custody of the footage of what happened on Saturday night? Yes, now, because the footage of what happened together with the CCTV, we remove it. Uh, uh, the, the manager of the club, who also is an alleged fraudster, you know, our investigation also psychosed him. Yeah, he agreed. He said, okay. Let the ICT people then, and then remove the CCTV camera, mm. and he handed it over to us. Right. We arrested him, and we brought the CCTV camera together with him to our office in, in Ibadan. We have to go now, Mr. Oyewale, yes. but this statement is in reaction to the online bashing your agency is getting. Uh, part of it, I'm sure you are aware, is the many questions of perceived selective justice on the part of the AFCC, with many claiming... And I'm quoting a particular tweet here, uh, for instance, Verba team. Somehow, the AFCC was quick to arrest a groom and his friends on their bachelor's eve in Akure, claiming it was a Yahoo party, but haven't worked up the nerve to arrest Yahya Bello yet. Uh, perhaps it's a good time to give us an update on that. How is the AFCC reacting to this? Well, you, I, we, I take very serious assumption to that because there is no truth. There is no modicum of truth in that. The issue of Yaya Bello is public knowledge. We are in court against him. The next court appearance is June 13, before Justice American waiting of the Federal High Court in, 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 the, in Abuja. So the matter is in court. And uh, we have the next adjourned date is June 13, and together we'll be in court. So it is wrong for anybody to say that the EFCC is involved in selective whatever. No, there is no basis. There is no argument to justify that. I, I've always said that all our activities, they are broad-based, they are fully in integrated, they are professional and non-selective. If you have any issue with the EFCC, you will know that the EFCC is not selective. So on the issue of Yaya Bello, we are in court. We are, we are in court with him. June 13, we are there together. It's, it's, it's the business of the court. We have issued and we have, we have declared him wanted, which is a standard practice in law enforcement. So there is nothing that is left for the EFCC to do. We are already doing what we are supposed to do. And by June 13, we will all meet in court. No, perhaps what they are saying is that if you have declared a person wanted, you should have exercised the same capacity to arrest him the same way you have arrested 127 people. When the, suspect, when the suspect is declared wanted. Yes. Now, the prerogative of arrest, the prerogative of bringing him to justice, you know, now rests on all the law enforcement agencies. Including, in including no, the FCC personnel. That, right? No, are you saying that? No, no, including no, the FCC personnel, you. right? Yeah, including FCC personnel. So, 
there are dragnets, there are efforts that have been made, you know, to arrest him. Okay. The very fact that he has not been physically arrested mm. should not be should not be construed or should not translate to the fact that he will not be arrested. That's At the time. time, he will be arrested. Yes,